we got this video Johnny Bravo the feminist incel by Petty Page Page Christie. I hear that I'm mentioned in it. Let's see what let's see what we got. Let's see what we got here. Johnny Bravo was ahead of I like listen, I like Paige's style, but she does look like a character from Star Trek. Right? It's true. I looks good. You know, maybe <laughs> sorry if that's ignorant. It's time. Many of us millennials will remember this crude but funny cartoon about a blonde haired, super buff American I man do. who consistently finds himself in trouble with the opposite sex. With his sharp looks, blonde quiff, and muscular body, he's not your typical cis het incel. Instead True. of looking like this. Why, why'd you cut to me? I'm not an incel. I'm, I'm literally married. I can't. How can I be an incel? He looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's funny. She messaged me and asked me to do a, a little a little bit. I was like, yeah, sure. I didn't think I would be that early in the video. That's very funny. <laughs> it's so cringe watching me do the like, talk sometimes, bro. <laughs> oh, Lord. Do you mind? You're in my way. Yeah, I know. But just like any other insult. He doesn't even have fingers. He has mitten hands. He has never been kissed. A virgin longing for sexual intimacy. I'm, I'm literally married. Uh -huh. What the fuck? <laughs> Basically, the show was aimed at oh children, but was essentially about a grown man who was on the pool desperate to get laid. I originally Oof. thought of this video concept whilst high and explained this to my husband and my mother, who actually both thought it was a very interesting concept. Hey, listen, you call me an incel, Paige, but your mother, your mother, your mother wants it. You know what I'm saying? So you better be careful or I'm going to be your new dad. All right. You better watch out. So this video essay is a legitimate high thought put into video format. And I'll leave you guys to decide whether it should have stayed in my brain or not. <laughs> Today we will be taking a look at the 90s TV show Johnny Bravo and how Johnny I believe Rubbler. this show was a seminar for us as little kids in feminism, sexism, and female emancipation from the patriarchy. So let's take a look at all of this and more in today's video essay, Johnny Bravo, the unlikely feminist incel. Feminist incel. Oh, yeah, I'm jamming on this. Wow. A little retro beat. Did you guys did you guys actually print this label out and put it on there? Wow. That's too much work for me, bro. <laughs> Johnny Bravo's mom is hot, bro. She could legitimately get it. No joke. Today's video. Like I know people are always simping after. Um, that's a nice. That's a that's a nice rendition. I know people are always simping after Dexter's mom. I mean, and, and we know why. But bro, there there were so many. There were so many wide-hipped moms back in this. This is what ha this is. We were groomed. We were all groomed into thinking this was hot because it is. <laughs> this was like every mom, and you're like, "Wow, that's actually hot." It's true. Is proudly sponsored by AdamandEve.com. Now, girl, Whoa. we all know who Adam and Eve is. They have been given the ooh ah ah sensation for years, honey. And there is lots of fun to choose from if you take a look wow. at their website. But today, wow. Adam and Eve have given me a discount code which will give you 50% off one item as well as free shipping in the US and Canada. However, some exclusions may apply. The best. You know what I would buy from Adam and Eve? I've been looking for a, a, a penis mold that ha with balls. Do they have that? Not just the penis mold. I want a penis mold with balls, okay? Because my I like that. It's a, it's part of the package. Let me tell you something. If you're gonna take a spicy pick for a girl, keep this in mind. I'm being serious. Not just the shaft. You need to be a little more creative. Girls don't just like that. They like an atmosphere. They like a little maybe some of the, some of your stomach. Yeah, I'm a little I'm a little uh, big, but they like it. You know, they like to see the uh, that the the fupa area. Okay, they like to see the the potatoes okay you got to make you got to get you got to get all of it in there this is real you got to be a little a little artistic and creative okay you gotta you gotta tell a story because girls they, they they're not as big into pictures like you know you sending that pic is more for you it's like you're like send me praise right 
So you have to you have to give her like a little like you know, schmooze her a little bit. Tell her a story without saying anything. You know what I mean? That's what you want. That's what you gotta do. Send pics are boring, send videos. Yeah, that makes sense. You have a little moaning, but don't don't be gay about it. sorry. I'm not trying to be derogatory. Don't don't moan. Don't go oh like gross. Be a little subtle about it. All right? Relax. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. The thing about Adam and Eve is that they have 24-7 <laughs> customer service, meaning that they're the people you Whoa. speak to when you need to turn up your bus. They turn have up my butt. They have 90 no hassle returns with <gasps> super No Frank Hassle returns. Shipping. Ooh. That's guaranteed to give you all of the tingles. Okay, ASMR. But one of the dopest <laughs> things about Adam and Eve is that 20% of their profits can to fight the spread of HIV around the world. Why would I? Why would I care about that? Okay, HIV disproportionately and negatively impacts gay people. Why would I care about helping gay people? I'm sorry, that was a very insensitive joke. That's terrible. That's a good cause. It really is. All right, let's skip through the promo though. It's a little raunchy. Oh wait, two dudes kissing. Very sexy. All right. Betty Boo. Oh, she's juxtaposing Betty Boop with Johnny Bravo. Well, it's actually going to be interesting. Okay. Men in cartoons is a very sexist one. I am and a racist one. one. However, back in yeah. the 1920s to the 1930s, Disney Brother Studios, who we yeah. now recognize as Disney, would get their first ever competitor, a production company called Flesher Studios. According to Wikipedia, Flesher Studios' characters included Coco the Clown, Betty Boop, Bimbo, Popeye the Sailor, and Superman. Unlike other that. studios, whose characters were anthropomorphic animals, the Flesher's most successful characters were humans. With the exception, I wasn't expecting it to be boring. I just didn't know where she was going to go with it. Okay, I didn't. Okay, sh shut up. Of Bimbo, a black and white cartoon dog. The cartoons of the Flesher Studio were very different to those from Disney, both in concept and in execution. As a result, they were rough rather than refined and consciously artistic rather than commercial. But in their unique way, their artistry was expressed through accumulation of the arts and sciences. This approach focused on surrealism, dark humor, adult psychological elements, and sexuality. Furthermore, the environments were grittier and urban, often set in surroundings reflecting the Great Depression as well as German Expressionism. Their first female character would end up being Betty Boop. Betty Boop was born to Betty Flesher Boop. Studios in 1930. She was- You know what's so interesting? Well, first of all, she has goat ears. So she's actually kind of an animal, which is weird that there's so many animal themed characters back then. I mean, we sit here, we were like, oh my God, I hate furries, but like, you know, our entire, clearly there's an entire generation of like furry furries in some capacity. Let's keep that in mind. Um, but more than that, like we're talking about how Dexter's mom and Johnny Bravo's mom were hot. I they must the, people probably found the Betty Boop to be very attractive back then. And I don't I personally don't see it. Not a big fan of the character, not super attractive to me, but that's probably what it is. Also, is that a dog? Is she supposed to be a dog or a goat? a weird dog-like creature with like floppy ears and was ultimately designed to be a love interest for Bimbo, who was the animated black and white dog on his mm. own series. Betty Boop first appeared in the cartoon Dizzy Dishes, where she worked as a performer at a local speakeasy that Bimbo the dog worked at. She eventually traded in the floppy poodle dog-like ears for earrings in 1932. In wow. the episode debuting her new earrings in the cartoon titled Any Rags, this cartoon's premise was essentially that Bimbo, the garbage man was asking people for their clothes that he wanted to take to the garbage. Whilst asking the commons folk on the street if anybody has any rags, Betty Boop comes to the window and her top falls down, exposing her bra. Whoa, on the that's sexy, dude. What the hell? We got to bring that back to cartoons. All occasions. Yeah. I'm, I'm not even kidding. After her hey, dark I to like human it. change, <laughs> Betty Boop then went on to star in over a hundred different animated shorts. <laughs> From 1932 oh, to 1934, Betty Boop had somehow created this weird, strange brand of innocent sexuality. Her mm. theme song, Pen and Ink, made it very clear what it is that she was there to represent. With lyrics such as, those eyes, that pretty nose, although aside from these, she's got so much of those. I'll let you decide what you think some of those are. Probably boobies, titties, uh, boobs, bobas. You know what I mean? That sounds what it talk about, you know? 
Take a listen. There's a little queen of the animated screen. Wait till you get up, you are sweet, Betty. Made up in any, she can win you with a wink. Wait till you get up, you are sweet, Betty. Those eyes, that pretty nose. I know aside from me, she's got so much of gold. Ooh, yeah. Just a perfect little sheep. Wait till you get up, you little This is so fucking weird, though, honestly. <laughs> it's so weird. Besides being horrendously racist and sexist, Betty's short and... It sounds really based, Betty, uh, uh, Paige. I'm sorry. It sounds very based. It's not a good look for me. <laughs> animated films also featured adult themes. Horny okay. animated characters often chased her around in almost every episode, trying to get a peek under that skirt. Essay wasn't the same as it is today back then because nobody gave a flying F about coercive consent, which isn't a legitimate form of consent, but I digress. Oh, good old days, you know. Grass. In an animated short days. titled Boop Excuse Boop A Doop, circus performer Betty Boop had to fight out a clear sex offender who also happened to be in a position of power as the circus ring leader. It's clear that this man was in a supreme position of power and oh boy, was he willing to use it. Yeah. Do you like your job? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, I think if I were you, I'd go to the but Jesus oh, Christ. Christ. You mean? No. There'll be no more poop -poo 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 you. Betty's response to his advances are you can feed me. You know what's interesting though? In that situation, like um like I think people understood that was like an abuse of power. It just wasn't called out as much because they used it they used it to portray him as like a bad character. What's interesting to me though is that um in this scenario, you know, we have a situation of a like a guy abusing like okay. This might be like a little out there. But I've noticed kind of a trend of utilizing like predatory sexual advances to instantly establish characters are bad um, instead of like doing something else to make the character bad. I know this sounds so weird, but that I've watched so many shows and stuff where like instead of explaining that the character's a bad person, they're like, oh, he, he tried to he tried to rape a girl. And I know that sounds so weird, but to me, that almost feels like sexist. Maybe, I'm, I don't know. It's like a feeling I get. It's like instead of actually trying to create um, intelligent writing, it's like, oh, rapist, easy, done. I don't know. It's so hard to articulate what I mean and why it sounds so bad. And so I know people will probably listen and be like, I don't know if I, I agree with you, Papa Gut. And that's totally reasonable. But there's just like something there that just feels like incorrect. And I guess I, I hope I'm going to try to flesh it out better. But I, I, you know, at least I hope that people understand, like what some people at least are like. Okay, I get what you're saying, you weirdo. You know what I mean? Hopefully that, hopefully that's uh, so, you know what I mean. But it just feels bizarre. Give me bread and water. You can even give me hay, but please don't take my boop oop a doop away. Boop, she says boop. this with tears rolling down her cheeks, coming from her eyes. Ooh, come, come from her eyes. Now, luckily, besides the stroking of Betty's legs, we, the viewers, don't actually get to watch the assault take place. After almost an entire minute... Oh, wait, does he actually assault her? Like, in the thing? That's terrible. I wonder. Um, I wonder what the narrative. I wonder what the the message was supposed to be. I know it sounds so bizarre to say like that, but I wonder if the message was supposed to be like, "Oh, this is a bad thing," or if the message was supposed to champion his behavior. Because you could probably make like a somewhat reasonable argument that this was like a um, somewhat reasonable argument that this was to an extent like an attempt at like trying to educate guys on how. <clears throat> You know uh, how some of them can be predatory because it was more normal to just be like, "Oh yeah, I'll take it from you if you want to give it to me." You know, I I just I just wonder. I truly do. I truly wonder. Minute of struggling and screaming, Coco the Clown finally gains access to the tent and was able to quote unquote rescue Betty Boop and to stop the ringleader from taking her boop boop a doop away. Uh, There's also see. another video called Old Man on the Mountain where a pervert actually manages to remove all of Betty Boop's clothes altogether before the townsfolk actually swoop in and end up beating him up. However, the point is, is that from the beginnings of cartoon history, women have always been seen as sexual objects 
objects only there for male gratification. Damsels in distress yeah, yeah, in yeah. need of saving. Fleischer Studios did eventually go defunct 80 years ago almost in July 1942. But to say they set the blueprint for women's objectification in cartoons is an understatement. Thankfully, Disney would opt to take a different approach, making women out to be damsels in distress in need of saving. And who do they need to be saved by? Men! Bro. Even if that man is almost twice their age, kissing dead corpses like some weird freaking necrophiliac. But nonetheless, <laughs> the hallmark was set. Long before Johnny Bravo had even arrived, figures I grew up watching, such as Gaston. I'm about to Gucci. say, dude, fucking Meg from dude, from the from uh, Hercules. She's hot, bro. She was her, she was her own woman too. Okay, she was a strong, independent woman, and she didn't need no man. That's who I grew up. That's like my favorite Disney movie is is uh, Her Hercules. Hercules. I don't know why I said it like that. It was, my, it was like my favorite, bro. I love that movie a lot. I also love Xena the Warrior Princess. She was hot as fuck. It's pretty cool stuff, dude. In the Beast, we're undermining women's intelligence by seeing them as objects of desire for their personal gratification. Wait, really? can I just say something? Gaston? Okay, so I went to Disney and the Gaston has like his own tavern. I was like, oh, cool. I want to go to Gaston's tavern. Now, just so you know, Gaston is the hyper masculine character from whatever. Uh, from. Like he's hyper masculine. He's a he's a man's man. So I'm sitting here. I'm like, I want to go to Gaston's tavern, right? Because you know what's gonna be in there? There's gonna be hamburgers, bratwursts. You know what I'm saying? Or some 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 powerful foods, bro. They sold fucking pastries. Fucking pastries. They sold fucking pastries, guys. I was I was confused. I was like, kidding me? It's supposed to be a man. He's selling pastries. They had a ham sandwich with Swiss cheese. The, the, mo the most feminine of cheese. Okay. Oh. Ooh. Okay, just so you know. I was like, what the hell is this? This is insane. It's cr it's crazy. In books? <laughs> Nah. This would be the beginning of women's empowerment for Disney. However, it would be several years later before we would see films such as Mulan, as well as Moana and Brave, where women could be the protagonists without the need of any kind of heteronormative romance. Heteronormative. Growing up, Johnny Bravo was one of my favorite cartoons. I remember from the moment it is that I watched Johnny Bravo, I instantly fell in love with it and found it hilarious. As kids, oh, we love nice. slapstick comedy. And with Johnny always finding himself in conflicts with the opposite sex, acting like a hyper-masculine misogynist Neanderthal, he was always subject to brutal self-defense triumphs by women. But that was a long time ago. However, since then, we've all learned a little something about feminism, which potentially places a character like Johnny Bravo, whose running gag is his inappropriate behavior and sometimes sexual misconduct towards women, it puts that in a weird place. How could I watch this show as an adult and still find enjoyment? How could Stone Page watch this show as an adult and still find enjoyment? Well, I think it's because the show creators definitely understood what it was that they were doing. They were teaching us from a young age, feminism. Johnny Bravo is basically an archetype update Maybe. to Pepe Le Pew, the French skunk from Warner Brothers. However, the fundamental difference between Pepe Le Pew and Johnny Bravo is that Johnny Bravo was created post women's liberation and it definitely Interesting. A lot of men wrote it. I didn't. Seth MacFarlane apparently uh, played a role in writing this, which I didn't even know. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it's making fun of like a very hyper masculine male figure. It may obviously like making fun of that that person and who they are. So like, yeah, you can make that argument. Or maybe everybody who wrote it's a big bunch of nerd beta losers that just wanted to make fun of the tough strong guys because they because they beat them up in school. You never know shows so it's kind of funny to me that johnny parallels a character that essentially is a skunk because both of them are repellent to the object of their desire in the pepe le pew cartoons the punchline was essentially the stalking and harassment of his potential love interests for laughs however with johnny bravo the writers turned johnny the aggressor into the target of audiences laughter through verbal and physical humiliation we're not laughing with johnny we're laughing at johnny and this changes the 
the dynamic between the audience and the protagonist. As we see the extreme measures that perspective love interests will go to to emasculate Johnny Bravo. And we, the audience, will laugh at him because we will all collectively see this as Johnny getting what he deserves. This yeah, and I guess if you if you look into it too, I guess women standing up for themselves. Like it, I don't I don't remember explicitly, and maybe I'm just wrong. Um, any of the women like needing saving, for lack of a better term. So, I guess there's something there as well, because the women were always the ones they would always kick his ass, which shows that you know women can, women can do things. I mean, like what? Okay, yeah, right. But positive message. Despite the characterization that Johnny is your typical chauvinist pig, Johnny Bravo actually goes out of its way to prove that they are not anti-feminist by punishing Johnny at every available opportunity. He's the incel punching bag. He's the punchline. Pardon the pun. Better our protagonist, which in most Better cartoons would be again. deemed as our hero, was the one person we wanted to watch experience misfortune. Johnny was violently rejected by women. I don't know, man. I was hoping that one day he would get some pussy, you know? That, that was my hope. I feel like he never got it, you know. He never—he was never able to get it. I think I feel like we're weren't we all just like, ah, oh, Johnny. I hope one day, man. I hope one day you get a little bit. That's me personally. Like he was—he was like the lovable predator, you know. <laughs> I know that sounds so weird, um, but I was—I was kind of rooting for him, you know, a little bit. You know, just hoping that maybe he would get something one day. But maybe that's just me. He was incredibly stupid. He's a dependent man-child who lives with his mom. True. His only friends like are a little girl and an independent that's, man who literally. That's weird. His only friends is a little girl. That's weird. I didn't even think about that. True. Very bizarre. Friends with a little girl. What the fuck's the matter with you, bro? Grow up. He used to bully him at school, and he's a stereotypical geek. Nonetheless, despite the bodybuilder muscular physique, he's frequently beaten to a pulp by women, men children, animals, and even in some cases, inanimate objects. And most episodes end with him- well, You already said women, Paige. <laughs> Got him! <laughs> you have to say it twice. Either being in jail or in extreme <laughs> physical pain. Johnny showed us as children what can really happen when we don't respect people's boundaries. We ridiculed the protagonist and then laughed at his anguish. We were taught that respect was the only way to a person's heart. However, when it comes to the Johnny Bravo formula, we learn that Johnny always fails and never learns from his mistakes. No matter how persistent he is, the objective of the show is to always make Johnny the fool so that the audience can learn from his mistakes and ultimately reject his ideology just like he's rejected by all of the women in the world around him. This is extremely progressive for the 90s and a fundamental teaching in feminism. So because of this, Johnny could never get the girl because that much of an arc for his character would require serialism with episodic lessons for him to be taught. But just like- how Joe Bartolosi's talking about me on stream. I don't believe you, but I'll take a look just to, just to see. What is he saying? I have a very nice, bald, handsome head. I'll say. Too easy. The game is too easy. The game is too easy. He's not talking about me at all. He didn't ask for your advice, Joe. Doesn't matter. I'm still going to get it. Dude. Um, Literally. Like, uh, that game doesn't speed up anymore. No coin challenge. That's it. It's just Subway Surfers is just, bro, like, I, I got to, like, a million points or a million score in that game, and I was just like, bro, like, it's not getting faster. The you game talk, stays you talking, the same speed. You talking From shit? Content app and just app in general. Like, Even I could you, theoretically go to, like, infinity. YouTube shorts Let's see. TikTok's, like, second competitor doesn't even pay you. Moist Critical made a video on how much he got paid for 2 million views worth of shorts, and it was 21 cents. That is literally 10 cents. Shorts plays... Shorts does pay. Shorts pays, um bonuses but they're only handed out to a specific amount of people it's the same thing yeah. as uh snapchat oh it's a different creator manager that's what i figured all right you're distracting me homer simpson and peter griffin <laughs> it is imperative that these characters don't learn anything or change because if these characters learn and grow then the show itself would need to end as soon as the protagonist reaches their goal I well i feel like in family guy hold on we missed a little bit because we, we stopped it is imperative for him to be taught. But just like Homer Simpson and Peter Griffin, it is imperative that these characters don't learn anything or change. Because if these characters learn and grow, then the show itself would need to end. You know what's interesting? It's like in Family Guy, like I don't, I'm not gonna call this character growth. I'm gonna call it character change. 
But the character, it's like the Flanders effect. Like, I know what she's saying. There's no actual character development in, like, Family Guy or any show like that. But characters do change, right? So, like, in the, in the beginning, um, Peter Griffin used to be, like, a lovable father who actually, like, respected his family and his daughter and everything and wanted the best for them. And then what did that turn into? That turned into... You know, him being really, for lack of a better term, a fucking abusive piece of shit. Like, he would just berate his family at a certain point um, and, like, make jokes. And, like, Meg was like, you know, he would just, like, basically beat the shit out of Meg all the time, you know? So that's not really character growth, I wouldn't call it. I wouldn't say that's character growth per se. I would say that that's, like, um, that's just a change where you become, you become. Where the character evolves or shifts into its most like hyperbolic role. Like Peter used to be kind of stupid and goofy. So let's create the character being exclusively stupid and goofy. Like that that's where that ends up um like happening. You know what I mean? So I'll as soon as the protagonist reaches their goal, i.e. in this situation, you know, finds a significant other who, who cherishes and loves them, settles down, gets married, probably has a couple of kids, oh, the happening. story is over. So Johnny is unfortunately doomed in an endless loop of doing the same things over and over and over again. Side note, I also think that True. this is a reason that the show couldn't sustain and continue on for many seasons, because I think there was only like four seasons of the show. And I think that's probably down to the fact that there's only so many ways that Johnny could disrespect women without going as far as to you know try and take somebody's boop boop a doop away but is johnny bravo the character themselves a feminist or is it the show's writers I seriously get oh my god when it comes to the discussion as to whether Johnny Bravo himself, the character, is a feminist or whether he was used, the character, as a tool to teach us feminism, there are two episodes that stand out to me. The first episode is The Sensitive Male. In this episode, Johnny tries, as per usual, to make his advances onto women, which he is ultimately rejected. He then meets a short, bald guy who isn't exactly the depiction of male beauty standards. He graciously asks the girl on a date and she gives him his number. Johnny, bewildered and confused, Ask this guy what his secret is. He states it's all about sensitivity and showing women respect. In a Hitch-like episode, Johnny tries and fails numerous times to show sensitivity and respect to women. The girls just simply couldn't jive with his sensitive side. In the end, his bald new friend... Yeah, so the lesson there, guys, never try to respect women because they don't care, okay? You want to know why that bald guy got got them? Because he got money, boy. He got money. They're like, oh, shit. I'm gonna suck your bald penis. True. And fuck, I am rhyming today. Tells him to fake it and admits himself that he just fakes it and tells women what it is that they want to hear just so they'll date him. Well, you know, Johnny, you've got to act polite, thoughtful, and considerate. But no one ever said you gotta mean it. Heck, I'd tell a girl I could turn lead into gold if it'd get her to date me. That's when news <laughs> of his conquest come what together, a chad, dude. hog tie him, and throw him in a well. This is a very interesting episode to me because Johnny didn't end up being the bad guy. He was really trying to implement what he was being taught. He wanted a real connection in an honest way and made himself vulnerable in order to achieve it. However, the ultimate lesson it is that we learned as kids was not to lie. That's true. When you're bald, you don't have to spend any of your money on haircuts and any and shampoo and hairstyling gel and stuff you actually save a lot of money so you can focus on those that's the benefit of being bald so to get what you want you gotta shave it you gotta shave it yourself shave a bolt you know? because whilst the little bald man may have showed sensitivity and delivered respect he didn't deliver it authentically with sincerity and essentially that was his ultimate demise that and being hogtied and then thrown into a fountain using the hyper masculine like disrespectful douchebag and the sensitive snaky manipulator as vehicles to display how not to treat people is pretty impressive the viewers were left feeling that Johnny was a dumbass, but at least he was honest about his intentions, and that there was something a little bit more sinister to the short bald guy. Dude, dude, the how that is exactly to me like, uh, like I don't know, like you call it like a fucking, um, like uh, fucking. It's literally a commentary, like what, however, twenty years ago, about uh, feminist men who like pretend to be feminists just for fucking pussy. It's the it is the exact same thing as like a commentary on like on feminist men, because that's exactly what's going on there. 
<laughs> that's fucking crazy. About how that's like, yeah, I just pretend to respect women so that I can like, do whatever I want them, basically. That's fucking crazy. You do. You're better off being the outright disrespectful piece of shit. You shouldn't be, but you're better doing that than pretending you're like being like a snake in fucking, or what is it, a wolf in sheep's clothing? You know what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying guy another episode that stands out to me is which a woman where the show calls out johnny's misogynist behavior in this episode johnny is cursed by a tarot reader who basically says that he nice needs boobies. to experience life as a woman in order Ooh. to understand women johnny then becomes Ooh. a woman and is now seeing firsthand what it is like to be on the receiving end of unwanted advances after putting a few men in their place physically he then becomes the leader of a girl gang and he gets his wow he becomes a fucking like he, he becomes like a fucking lesbian what the fuck <laughs> that's crazy the queen of the lesbians incredible revolutionary moment where he realizes that women are smart behind him are the photographs of prominent female historic figures to really drive home how dope and independent women are wow. immediately after he has this revelation he becomes a man again and returns right back to his impulses of treating women like objects he is Hey, that just shows me that's biological. Nothing we can do about it. Oh, we disrespect women? Sorry, it's in my DNA. Boom, got him. That's all you have to say, because that's what's happening here. Oh, sorry, it's in my DNA. Essentially decides to stage dive into the sea of women and was left flat on his face. Again, he learns nothing. Oh, I see there's a whole lot of women out there. So if you're looking to feast on 100% USDA prime hunk, there's more than enough Johnny to go around. So we can conclude that Johnny, the character, isn't exactly a feminist. But do the show's writers use Johnny as a way to convey a very feminist message? Well, yeah. I mm, know. No, because the female characters on the show Johnny Bravo have no autonomy of their own. They literally only exist in relation to Johnny Bravo. His mother willingly looks after Johnny Bravo, even though he is a grown adult and does not encourage him to emancipate himself. Little <laughs> She doesn't even encourage him to respect women. <laughs> uh, I think that Johnny's just a lovable idiot, you know? He's a, he's a, he's a fun guy. He's a fun guy at parties, you know? Susie, his niece, only existence is to literally serve as an annoyance to Johnny. Nope. There are numerous unnamed women on this show who, again, only exist for Johnny to hit on. Confirming the patriarchal stereotype that I guess the show was trying to avoid. The well, I mean, I think that's just going to be because that, that, that show is very, is, it's like male centric. You would say that it's an, it would be inherent. You, you could argue it's inherently sexist because it like it, there there is a disproportionately high amount of shows that men or boys were the, the, the central character to. But I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't say that you can't. You could still push like positive feminist messages, even when I guess the system is a little is sexist. If that makes sense, you know, it's like okay. It's and uh, so I would say that doing it like a what if you were a girl episode, like they did, that's probably really good for the empathy of people. Because who identifies with the Johnny Bravo character, guys, right? Um, which is one of the common complaints. Hey, not enough representation. Because you can't identify with characters. It's the same thing as like in the show, in the movie Turning Red, where like I had there's no I could identify with like the dad character I guess, but there weren't like a whole lot of characters I could identify with. There's only fucking one dude. It wasn't even white, and that's okay. Like I, I'm not saying I need representation because that's very abnormal for like media that I consume. Um, but most of the time, like there's definitely characters I can identify with. I mean, you know, for most white people that they're kind of there, and that doesn't you don't have to be white for you to identify with it, you know. Um. You get what I'm saying, though. Um, but yeah, people identify with that. Guys can identify with this character more than girls, certainly. And then if you relay a message, like through here's like a gender bender episode, um, that, that can have a positive impact on people. You know what I mean? That's usually, I guess, to an extent, like if you want to call it activism, how activism works. You know what I mean? Like a lot of times, like women will be like, hey, I'm we're oppressed in some capacity. And then some men will go, I agree. And some men will say, I disagree. And then the men who disagree with women aren't going to really come to terms with this by talking to women. It's usually by talking to men who understand where they might be coming from with some of their talking points that can still talk through them. Right? So, like, I guess, for instance, there's, like, a Sneeko situation where he thinks that, like, women have it really easy because all they have to do is OnlyFans and they don't have to do any work and they can just make a lot of money. And then you'd say, you know what I mean? Like, so, uh, like talking to a woman, he's not going to, you could say whatever you want. He's not going to listen to you. 
But if a guy talks to him, it's like counters that. It's like okay, yeah, yeah, that is an advantage of being a woman. But like that, that if that's your best advantage for a woman is for the, their ability to sexualize themselves and make a lot of money. Uh, first of all, not all women are attractive enough to make OnlyFans. Second of all, society almost exclusively values women based on their look. So it's not. And third of all, it's really uh, mentally stressful doing pornography. And so, like you know, they probably listen better uh, as a guy. You know. So, anyway. But women only exist to serve men. Be it their positions sure. as characters sure. on the show to either be subservient or nags or just non-descriptive figures for Johnny to practice on. The women are no better than a blow-up doll. The show does exactly what they are trying to teach Johnny not to do. It objectifies women. Despite the show's best efforts, Johnny's behavior is glorified in the same way that anti-slavery movies can sometimes glorify slavery. And that Johnny's behavior that could be considered as, you know, SA is minimized to stupid Johnny, always so unlucky in love. I just died. So what was the banger. point of this page? Your high thoughts are leading us nowhere. Is Johnny Bravo a feminist or what? Honestly, I don't even know. Well, I, I was high. Well, Johnny Bravo is, is certainly not a feminist. <laughs> or <laughs> but the feminist, I mean, maybe it's probably a positive woman message, at least in a sea of like messages that tend to be generally negative. So, yeah, sure. What I do know is when looking at Johnny's attempted love interests, we see women being depicted as strong, intelligent, industrious, powerful, driven. The women he wanted to date were all in a position of power from the Amazonian women who created their own female society. Bro, do you remember the... um? You remember the the, the 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 Futurama episode with the Amazon women, and they were big and they would fuck women to death. It's incredible. To marine biologists, scientists, doctors, computer programmers, army sergeants, and basically any role in society that we would deem as male dominated. The women it is that Johnny pursued were following their dreams and their goals. And Johnny actually got rejected because he served as a distraction from those goals. The term toxic masculinity was barely even referenced online until 2015, when it entered the mainstream culture and the Me Too movement pushed discourse about toxic masculinity into the public, into the mainstream. From daily news to journalistic articles to sociological studies being made on workplace attitudes. Yeah, I'm doing impoppable, yeah. As silly and potentially antiquated as Johnny Bravo might seem, in comparison to today's cartoons, Johnny Bravo was a cartoon with a conscience and a understanding of women's rights. But as a culture, we respond to problematic art that maybe has gone past its sell-by date by acknowledging its context and its intent. However, now as adults, we can recognize the politically incorrect way that satire defined the media of our younger years. But we can also lean into the message that it sends. In 2022, 20 plus years since the first episode of Johnny Bravo aired, we are now talking about how Johnny Bravo perfectly exemplifies what toxic masculinity is, whilst in tandem sent people a strong message of feminism and gender equality, as well as positive feminine images to show us, even as minors, that what makes a woman is so much more than gender conformity. And although society's instantaneous response is to either ban it or rebrand it, I believe we should run with it because the adult humor it is that we missed as kids becomes all the more prevalent now as adults. And Cartoon Network, Hanna-Barbera, as well as Warner Brothers had an amazing way of producing shows that would circle around and give years of entertainment because everything can be mocked until it becomes a satire of itself oh hi okay hopefully okay interesting i like that video it was very interesting um it was unfortunate it was made by a woman but outside of... sorry <laughs> no nah, it was good though i liked it I you guys enjoyed today's video. I don't know what to say. Literally, I was smoking one night. I was stoned and I was like having a high thought. And I was like, do you know what? Johnny Bravo is feminism. Whilst I'm watching Johnny Bravo eating some Doritos and fruit pastels. I hope you guys enjoyed my theory, my thesis on this. Um, it was just so stupid. And I can't believe I've actually made it into an entire video. It's just so stupid. It's so dumb. This whole thing is so dumb. Anyway, if you like this video, please do not forget to sound up in the comment section. I, I genuinely want to know what it is that you guys think. Like, do you think <laughs> do you think i just went too deep for no reason i thought it was good i thought it was fun it was fun it was different 
it was explorative. I think that like a lot of people, a lot of content creators, especially as they get like bigger, take less risks because they're like, oh, my audience doesn't necessarily respond well to this thing, um, which causes like content to get like a little stale, I guess, in general. So it's always good to take a little, a little risk, a little fun, fun stuff. Let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as well. Also, just to let you guys know, I am still looking for a new researcher. For those of you who have already applied for the researcher position, just know it is I'm giving it a full two weeks before I start looking through applicants. So if you haven't been responded to immediately, do not freak out. But if you would like to be a researcher for my channel, um, it's a paid vacancy. So it's literally all of the details will be in the description down below. Also, once again, I just want to say a massive thank you to my Patreon family to my um members family as well as the twitch family guys i don't think you guys understand that i literally couldn't do anything like this without you guys the additional support it is that i get allows me to take hold on a second <sighs> A massive thank you to my Patreon family, to my um, members see if family, I'm in. Let's as see well if as I'm the in Twitch here. family. Guys, I don't think you guys understand that I literally couldn't do anything like Let's this. Let's see. How. I'm finding me. You. I'm right there. I'm right there. Here it is. As well as the Twitch family. Hold guys, on, I don't hold think on. you guys understand that I literally couldn't do anything think like Papa got 2032. Oh, this is my Twitch subscribers. I'm subscribed on your Patreon too. What the fuck? The family as well as the Twitch. That's all right. Or actually spend produce. Um, with that being said, I just want to say a massive thank you as well to adamandeve.com. All right. Very cool. Very cool video. I do have to pee though. So I'm going to go do that. Epic W. Epic X Y Z. I was at the bottom. Very poggers. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And another special shout out to all my Patreon and Twitch subs. If you'd like to support this channel further than you already have by just watching the video alone, go down to the links below where you can sub on my Patreon, which will allow you to get your name on this beautiful black wall. <laughs> uh, or you can go to the Twitch page and you can actually use a free Amazon Prime sub, if you have Amazon Prime, to subscribe. Thank you very much, guys. Take care.